Did you know that 97% of seniors in the United States spend a fortune on dental procedures, particularly fillings? In this video, I'm going to explain why fillings are not a solution. They are a surgery that needs constant repair. In the late 1800s, if you had a toothache, chances were you'd go to the local barber shop, sit in the barber chair, and somebody with a pair of forceps would take out your tooth, sometimes with an anesthetic and sometimes without. That was dentistry in the latter part of that century. In the 1900s, a, an exciting event occurred because dentists formed themselves into organizations and they learned how to put fillings in teeth that had holes in them. They also learned ways of replacing missing teeth. But the interesting thing I want to talk about in this video is what happened with fillings. Well, the first fillings were actually filled with gold. Sometimes it was gold leaf. This is like a foil, a very, very soft gold that was hammered into the hole. It was very expensive. And so dentists were somewhat excited when along came this material called silver amalgam. Now, silver amalgam is a metal filing mixture that's actually made into an almost a paste with mercury. The big fight of the time in the early part of the 1900s was the fact that mercury had been used in the millinery, the hat business for felting process and found to be neurotoxic. This is why there were a portion of dentists who said that we should not use mercury fillings in teeth. But there were another group of dentists who believed that this was a way to save people's teeth. It was relatively inexpensive. It was fairly easy to mix up and put in people's teeth because this metal, when it was mixed, was quite malleable. You could actually carve it and pack it into the tooth. And then when it hardened, it was very resilient. It was very firm. It had the strength that was able to preserve teeth. Now, when I was a dental student, we were still mixing silver filings with mercury. I didn't know when I was a dental student anything about the problem of mercury toxicity. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But along came towards the beginning of the 1970s, the material made by 3M, a white filling material. It was two plastics that you mixed together and then they would set hard. That was the beginning of a white filling. I have one of those in one of my teeth. And the problem with the white fillings was you had to get it into the tooth really fast before it set. And that was a real challenge. So from there came the idea that you could have a soft white filling that was light sensitive. And most people today are familiar with the, the, the procedure where a dentist puts this white filling in their tooth and then shines a light at it and that hardens up this white filling when the dentist is satisfied that it's the right shape and he likes where it is and it gives the dentist as much time as he wants to actually work with this filling. Well, the problem with white fillings when they're done in that way is that they have to be etched. They have to actually glue to the surface of your tooth. And the glues and the etching and the whole uh, chemistry of these white fillings can irritate the nerves in the center of your teeth. That's one problem. The second problem is they are plaque magnets. White fillings literally attract plaque to them, to the edges of the filling. And the American Dental Association quite recently gave uh, the, the estimate now, they've done research to show the average length of time that a white filling lasts is 13 years. If you're 20, by the time you're 33, chances are you're gonna need a new filling. And when you have that new filling, it's only going to last another 13 years. So you can see that in your lifetime, you're going to need multiple repairs. That's another hazard for teeth. Every time that old filling is taken out, the nerve inside your tooth can become upset. And the trouble is you may not even know about it. When your filling has just been done, you may feel some sensitivity. 
it's a little peculiar to bite on. That can either be the glue on the inside of the white filling, irritating the nerve, or it can be because the nerve is just upset at these constant replacement of fillings. 10 to 15 years later, you won't just have a slightly sensitive tooth, you'll have a tooth that hurts to bite on. And that is because the nerve on the inside of the tooth, after being irritated, died. And when you have a dead tooth, there is nothing, there's nothing I know, there's nothing anybody knows to bring a dead tooth back to life. Unfortunately, what happens is that inside of the tooth gets infected and then you need to make a decision either to have a root canal, which is when they clean out the dead material and fill something else in the empty space. And then you will need a crown on top of that tooth. Or many people make the decision to have a tooth extracted and have an implant. And I will do other videos about implants. They are certainly not any better than a screw in the jawbone carrying an artificial tooth. Don't think an implant is a new tooth in your head. It has a lot of problems. It has high risk potential for gum disease. An implant is not a solution to your problem. It's a solution if your tooth didn't grow, but it's something otherwise that you really want to try to avoid. So I guess the message I want to explain is if you're told you have a new filling, even if they tell you it's a very small filling, if you accept this treatment plan, you can expect, draw on a sheet of paper what age you are, and every 13 years you can expect to need to replace that filling. The chances of two replacements upsetting the nerve in your tooth is very great. So you can then start budgeting for a very expensive root canal and crown potentially, or an extraction and a very expensive implant. And the implant may not last you very long either. I think that's in the region of 15 years as well. So this is not really where you want to go. What I recommend is either ideally preventive strategies that you start before you ever have a need for a filling, before you ever have any risk of a cavity. Start as soon as adult teeth come into the mouth. My complete mouth care system. The use of xylitol can begin even earlier than that. My strategies, my system of mouth care helps repair and regenerate the enamel that is on the outside of teeth. And if you have a cavity that is inside that, the strategies I recommend will often help, not always, but often help to reverse a cavity, even if it's into the dentin. Give yourself maybe three to six months to try and reverse a cavity so that you don't need a filling. Now, if that's all water under the bridge and you already have a giant hole in a tooth, my recommendation would be to try and seek a treatment that is neither silver fillings, definitely not anymore, nor just white ones, but one that is made with fiberglass. There are two kinds. One, one of these is where they put little pieces of fabric basically in the layers to make this filling firmer and more substantial. And the lifetime of a really well done filling by a dentist who's trained, and this would be biomimetic dentistry. And you can look that up. I will put a link to the website, but biomimetic dentists respect pristine teeth. They respect the integrity of your tooth. They don't want to make a crown. They instead have learned techniques from all around the world, from top dentists, in Italy and Australia and New Zealand. And these are the most brilliant minds in dentistry who have got together as a small group to teach dentists. They don't teach this stuff at dental school yet, but these dentists, the biomimetic dentists actually weave back, they mimic nature and they reconstruct the tooth to look like a natural tooth, to behave and have the strength more of a natural tooth than a white filling. I do recommend that if you already have a big hole in your tooth 
and there is no way to reverse it. I do recommend you use my system first anyway, because the stronger your enamel, the easier for any dentist to work on it and conserve as much of that tooth as possible. And the last thing is, is a crown forming technique called CIRAC or CERAC. And that is where they'll take an actual impression of the hole that your tooth has, and then they will almost cast, it's, it's almost actually, it's laser constructed lump of material is cut to fit your tooth. And then it is, again, this requires some glue, so it's not as perfect, but it is glued back into your tooth. And that is probably a better filling than a, just a regular white filling. So this is the modern technology of fillings today. But no matter how good they are, the best thing you can do is preserve the outside enamel on a daily basis. If you preserve the outside coating, the shell on the outside of your tooth, and keep it strong, that is what protects the inside, the softer part of your tooth. And healthy tooth enamel, they've tested its strength. It is stronger than steel. So don't be thinking ever that you are born with weak teeth or fracturing teeth or cracking teeth. All of those problems come because you are not looking after your teeth in the way that they need to be preserved and cared for. And that is what my systems do.